Happy New Year, everybody. Look at Lanny and his house. That's awesome. Smiling. Did you high five the neighbors at, or the nurses out? Yep. And here That's you are. That's awesome. And the Steelers need a lot of prayer. <laughs> There's Nick Trent. Yay. Nick, Happy New Year, Nick. Great to see you. Always good to see you and always good to see everybody. Everyone. Yeah. Everybody's on here today. You're all fired up. You're all excited about the new year. So happy new year, everybody, wherever you are in Florida, Texas, no matter where. We're glad you're with us and it's going to be a great day today. And so this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't care what's going on in the world. As long as we have the Lord and as long as he loves us and has a plan, that's what matters. And I'm really excited because I really believe in that God confirms things with signs. And I really feel like it's the new thing. Like, Daryl, I just want to give you such a shout out for being like first in line. So <laughs> two thumbs up to Daryl. <laughs> All right. See, Daryl, you made it. <laughs> you made it on the Zoom. This will be going out all over the world, and they're going to say, "Who is Daryl?" Right. And they're going to know Daryl. Open heaven for miracles. <laughs> we love you, Daryl. Amen. We do. We, do. <laughs> we, we really do. We appreciate all of you. <laughs> we want to say first before we even pray, we want to give God praise and thanks for the year uh that we had from all of you we, for being yeah. faithful for being supportive for caring and loving us praying for us supporting and um we thank god for each one of you and for for this past year for your support and we just pray that this year is going to even be better and even more importantly that we're going to see each other grow this year we're going to become more like uh, Jesus this year. Yeah. And uh, together we can grow together. We love each other. We need each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're all for each other. We're all in this together. And uh, so we're never alone because we have the Lord in each other. And uh, we thank you again for your kindness and support. And we can keep going because we're growing and more and more, we're going to believe this year we're going to see some amazing things. Does I don't care what the world looks like, we still have the Lord and we still have a plan. And that's what matters. And each of you, God has a plan. But the most important thing that we need to know today is that God loves you. And he's for you. And don't let anything ever hinder that, that God loves you and he's for you. All right, so Sarah's going to lead us in our first prayer of the new year. Are you excited? I'm excited. The, the Lord instructed me how to pray first, as well. There's like the Bible talks about first fruits, mm -hmm. that at the beginning of the year, they gave their first fruits to God. So we're going to give our first fruitful prayer to God today. That's right. To start the new year out. All right, so Sarah, go ahead. All right, so... Um, I actually would like everyone to, to join in in their own whatever, you, whatever is on your heart. But Lord, we come before you and we give you an offering of thanksgiving. We say, thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. We will bless your holy name. We thank you, God, that you that we do not forget a single one of your benefits. We thank you, Lord, that all through 2021, before we even go into 2022, we say thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for being our strength. Thank you for being our healer. Thank you for being our deliverer. Thank you for being our sanctifier. Thank you, Lord, for being the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Thank you for being our provision. Thank you for being the breath in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness that has overtaken us, Lord. 
thank you, God, for your kindness to us, for being long suffering with us. We thank you, God, for that, your patience with us that you've drawn us with cords of loving kindness day after day, moment after moment, breath after breath to you. Thank you, Lord, that you are our righteousness. Thank you that you're our light in the middle of the darkness, Lord. Thank you, God, that you are our song in the middle of despair. Thank you that you're our joy, <laughs> that you are our joy, Lord, that you are our joy, that you're our strength and our shield and our exceedingly great reward, that you're the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you will not forget your a single one of your benefits in your covenant, that you are the covenant keeping God. Thank you that you are the miracle working God. Thank you that you are the God that parted the Red Seas. Thank you, God, that you are the one who threw, who threw Pharaoh and the rest of his crowd into the ocean, never to be seen again. And I thank you, Lord, that today we are crossing over just like they did when they crossed over and the Red Sea parted, Lord, that I just see that right now, that today is a day of crossing over. And we thank you, Lord, that we fix our eyes on you, that we do not look at what the sea looks like on either side, because if we look, it's overwhelming for us. But it's nothing for you because you are the one who parted it, that you made a way in the wilderness, that you make a way in the desert, God. And I thank you, God, that today you bring us into the promised land into the promised land and we don't go by feelings we don't go by any of that stuff we go by your word that you've been our word when we've been without word that you've been our faith when we've been faithless that you've been our comforter that you've been our helper every step of the way every moment that you've been the god of the valley and you've been the god of the mountaintop that you've been the God of the deep and you've been the God of the height. And there is nothing like your love, Lord. And you've been faithful to your promise that nothing can ever separate us from your love. Nothing. No famine, no plague, no pandemic, no COVID, no sickness, nothing, Lord. Nothing, Lord. No, nothing, Lord because you are faithful. We thank you for your blood. We give you glory for your blood, that there is no stronger power than your blood and the victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nazareth. So we come forth in 2022, standing in the promised land, standing in your victory, that you are our victory, that we're not looking for victory in circumstances, but we stand in the victory because as you are in this world, so are we. And you are victorious over things that you say that you have overcome in the world. So we come in, Lord, and we say that we have overcome. Before we see anything in 22, we've overcome. That we're more than conquerors because we're in you. And we thank you, God, that we've come here for one reason and one reason alone, Lord, to seek your face, to hear your voice to experience your presence because there is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one so kind. There is no one so compassionate. There is no one so loving. And even if we were to recount, as the Bible says, all your works, <laughs> our thanksgiving would fall short. But we say thank you. And today we give you our hearts afresh. We give you our hearts afresh. We give you our minds afresh. We give you our bodies afresh. We give you this church and this ministry afresh. We give you every aspect in every area of our lives afresh. And we say, have your way, Holy Spirit. Because if you're with us, that is all that matters. And your promise says, I am with you always until the end of the age. So I thank you, God, that I feel your anointing so strong. I feel your presence so strong, Lord. My heart, my flesh may fail. 
sense your presence is from everlasting to everlasting, from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from faith to faith. And so we come before you, we come before your throne boldly because we're seated there. And we say in agreement with all of heaven and all the elders and all the angels, and the cloud of witnesses that all blessing and all honor and all glory and all power belong to you, King of Kings, immortal one. Our glory, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who is, and who was, and is, and is to come. So we give you our thanksgiving and our praise will forever be in our lips. We say thank you and we posture our hearts in an attitude of worship today. Have your way, precious Holy Spirit. We love you because you first loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we thank you, Lord, for your presence today. We thank you for everybody that's on today, everybody that will be coming on even after this. And uh, we again bless you and thank you for a happy new year for every person. And uh, so as we share today, we're going to talk about hope and this whole month, I decided as I prayed, and well, not I decided, I just sensed from the Lord as I prayed that we were to talk about hope and really define hope so that you really get an understanding of God's hope for us. And uh, we're going to start with Romans 15, 13, and uh, we're going to put this scripture up. And as you know, uh, a lot of people during this time, of course, are making out their whole New Year resolution, all kind of things. But see, you could have resolution and all that, but resolution won't get you anywhere if you don't have a solid foundational backing and anchor and promise of surety that what you're believing for can actually happen. And so today we're going to talk about the God of hope and how important it is for that. So in Romans 15, 13, uh, it says, now may the God of hope fill you. So I would like for you to put your name in there to start the new year. So now may the God of hope fill Sarah. I'm full. <laughs> <laughs> I'm overflowing. So we're going to put your name in there. Now may the God of hope fill your name in there. I want you to make this personal to start the new year. So may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Now, here's the key. God wants us to be filled with joy and peace, and he wants us to believe. Now, the word believe is another word. That's a strong word for conviction. Now, you know what a conviction is, Sarah? I do. What is it? It's a uh, like a, a strong, like a resolution, like not a New Year's resolution. I don't mean it in that kind of way, but a strong uh, sense that this is what I'm going to hold to. This is a strong decision. I've made this decision and I'm not going to budge. I'm not going to back from it yeah. and I'm going to stick with it. Right. So believing means you're going to stick with it. It's something that you're have a strong conviction about that nothing can sway you off right. of that. No matter what comes against you, no matter what your feelings say, what uh, trials try to come, you're going to have a conviction. So when you have strong conviction, it creates a absolute confidence in you that whatever you're believing, that it's going to come to pass. So then the rest of that verse says that you may abound in hope. Yeah. So now the God of hope wants you to believe him and have the strong conviction of who he is and anything he asks you to do that you have a strong conviction that you're going to believe that because believing opens the door for faith. It opens the door for expectation. 
it opens the door for you to be so connected to God and who, who he is. So here is what God wants you to know. He wants you to believe that he's a God of hope, a God of expectation. He wants you to believe that he's a God that loves you continually, no matter where you are, what you've done. He also wants you to believe in the power that he has. And he wants you to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. So every part of our being to start this new year is that we believe in the God of hope, the God of expectation, the God of promise, the God of joy, the God that we can have assurance to know that what he says he will do. And I have a belief and a conviction. And my faith is I trust God. I trust him for who he is. Now, I want to read this to you from the Strong's Concordance. According to the Strong's Concordance, the Greek word for hope means this. It means to anticipate, usually with pleasure and expectation of good. So the hope actually says, be excited, be joyful, no matter what it looks like in the natural. Hope gives you an expectation of good, even in the middle yeah. of a deep, dark trial, a deep, dark situation. Hope still can come in and give you a confident expectation of good, despite what doesn't look good at the time. Yeah. And how many believe that? Now, God wants you to come to a place where you have such a belief and such a conviction of that 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 runs you more than anything else. Then the next thing is, hope means that you have a confident expectation for something good in the future. In Proverbs 13, 12, it talks that we are to be filled with hope and that we have a conviction that God somehow is gonna turn things around for good even when they don't in any way in the natural make sense, God's still going to give you hope. So, so faith and hope kind of go together. You know, when you read Hebrews 11, 1, I think I wrote that down here. But uh, now it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith means I have a strong belief and conviction that God is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do and no matter what it looks like if there's no evidence of anything around me that says that it doesn't matter if I can't see it I can't feel it mm -hmm. or it's not even there yet I'm going to have a strong conviction that my future is going to be what God says it's going to be and I don't care what it looks like in the natural or what I'm looking at. I feel that. Do you feel that? I feel the anointing so strong today. Yeah. So now faith is the substance of things hoped for or expected. Yeah. And the evidence of things not seen. So I don't have to see it to believe it. I believe it before I see it. Because I believe what God says in the invisible before I see anything in the visible. But eventually the visible is right. going to outcome from the invisible. So the invisible God that we believe in that we can't see should be to us more conviction of reality than the outward reality in the natural that we do see. Yeah. Is that right? Absolutely. That's the key. And God's building you and I to have a belief system in the God that we can't see more than the evidence of what we see around us we have more of a conviction of what we can't see than what we can see in the natural. That's what faith and hope does. Then it says, for by the elders, the people that went before us, they obtained a good testimony yeah. because they said, now, now faith, it says in, in the Bible, faith is confidence. I love this. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we don't see. Right. So not only have a confidence, now we have an assurance. The word assurance means I am sure that God is who he says he is. I have a conviction yeah. and a belief about it. I'm also sure that even if I can't see the result 
of what he told me to believe for right away. I have an assurance because of him and his word and his truth and his promise of who he is, that he will bring about what he said he will do because he is God. Right. And God cannot lie. Right. And if God says it, and I believe it, it doesn't matter what the natural says. Even if things go contrary to what God told me to believe, I'm still going to believe and trust in him and have a conviction that in God, I have a hope that things are still going to turn out for good Yeah. because of that. So we have to remember that faith is a confident knowing that no matter what I'm looking at and even what I can't see, I know God is going to somehow work this out with what he said. Hope gives me expectation for my future, even when at times it looks contrary to what God has said. Yeah. But I have an assurance because I know God is true to who he says and true to who his word is. Now, let me share some things with you that I think are really, really important about hope. Then we're going to get into some scriptures. And today I want to talk to you about your mind. <laughs> <laughs> How many want to have a brand new mind in 2022? See, before we get to all the external things we want on the outside, we got to talk about the motivating force yep. behind it on the inside, and it's the mind. And I want to share some things with you that I feel to say today is we're going to this year get our mind right. That's one of the goals I believe for 2022. Let's write it down. This is the year of getting my mind right. Yeah. How's that sound, Sarah? You like that? Absolutely. Let's get your mind right. Now, let me share this with you. The mind that we have is actually broken and dysfunctional without Christ. Because when man fell, the mind fell. The thought life fell. Fear came into the mind. Fear came in there. Thoughts of fear, thoughts of loneliness, thoughts of doubt, all came into their mind. Shame, condemnation. Now, it's one thing to have guilt. Guilt can come and go, but shame will remain and attack yeah. your identity. Yeah. Shame tries to tell you who you are. So when man fell and Adam ate of the forbidden fruit, all this guilt and shame and condemnation came into his thought life. Fear for the first time came in to feel like he was separated and isolated from God's love. Now, God's love was still there. He just couldn't feel it anymore. He couldn't sense it because his mind became defiled. It became broken. It became dark, actually. And it became lifeless. Yeah. He was alive without the life of God. It's powerful, isn't it? Would you um, define for everyone condemnation? I think you have an excellent definition of it. No. <laughs> I really do. I really do. It well, really is very helpful. Well, the word condemn means to fall short of. It also means not fit for use. That's right. It means that you don't feel useful because of maybe something you've done or something you're thinking. So condemnation tries to tell you that you're never going to be used again. You're never going to be fit for use again. It always wants to take you into a place where you feel cut off. You feel like you're never going to ever be all that you could be. Right. And it also tries to limit your potential and keep you from ever thinking you'll get to where you could go. So the lie is you're not fit for purpose, yeah. but the truth is God's already designed you for that purpose. And he already has put your purpose in the future ahead of you because your purpose, write this down, my purpose is eternal. Right. So it can't be taken from me. Things will try to take it. Sin will try to take it. Mistakes will try to take it. People's opinions will try to take it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but none of those things are, those things are all temporary. And eventually, they have to submit to the eternal purpose and plan 
So therefore condemnation is robbed of its victory because you still have God backing you with his eternal plan. And no man can take that from you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So the mind is broken until it's set free by the word and by the spirit. The two yeah. things that set your mind free are the word of God and the Holy Spirit. To see the Holy Spirit, he can come in and take over your mind with God's word yeah. and keep you free from things that try to hinder you. And so I put this down. The mind is subject to whatever it is filled with. So whatever is filling your mind, whatever thoughts, opinions, hurts, things that try to talk to you, your mind is subject to whatever it's filled with. Mm -hmm. But even deeper than that, your mind is subject to whatever you dwell on. <laughs> See, because if you're thinking something and dwelling on it, you start to actually believe yeah. that more than what God says. So we have two choices here. We can either fill our mind with what God says he is, what his word says, and think on those things and dwell on that. Or we can think with ourselves and what we think and what others think and what Satan thinks and put all that, or you can go that way. So that's our choice. See, and you see, because God lives in me, that's why my mind has a future and hope. Right. Because God wants my mind to realize once I fill you with my thoughts, then you have hope for the future. My plan will dictate your future. My plan will bring about your future if you believe. If you believe. If you believe. So the key is for you to believe. Because God lives in me. I have hope. I have future. I have a favor because God's there. Now, uh, I want to uh, share something else here with you real, real quickly about the mind. See, with the mind, you have to fill your mind with God's word. We all know that. But here's the second thing to help you with your mind. Are you ready? I'm ready. You have to talk to your mind. That is so... That is so true. You have to talk to your mind. It's very true. See, you, and, and let me share this now. Here's a big nugget. Get your, I'm putting out 22 nuggets this year. See, instead of you listening to your mind, you need to talk to your mind. That's right. You need to control the mind with talking to the mind. See, when you're talking to your mind, the right things, God's word, Good things like when I wake up the morning or you wake up, you can talk to your mind by saying, this is the day the, the Lord, Lord has made, made and I, I will, will rejoice in glad. Or your minds can start saying this to you. Oh, what, look what all you're going to go through today. This is going to be a tough day. Already it's going wrong. Because already this thought's right. going Already something's going wrong. I can't already. And see, your mind is only going to go where it's listen to so whatever is controlling your mind will control you that's so true and you have the anointing through the holy spirit to talk to your mind instead of listening to your mind yep don't listen to your mind you set the course you set things in motion you set the day in motion mm -hmm. you set the year in motion yep. you set 2022 by getting your mind right and talking to your mind don't let your mind talk to you don't listen to your mind. You talk to your mind. That's very true. Ooh, that got me a little excited. Keep going. But that's the whole key. <laughs> so see, when you talk to yourself yeah. and talk to your mind, then you start to fill your mind with right things. And when your mind is right, then other things will start to go right for you in 2022. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4.18. I didn't give this to Kiana, but write this verse down. 2 Corinthians 4.18. While we look not at the things which are seen in the natural realm, but we look at the things which are not seen in the invisible realm. What is the things that are not seen? God is not seen. His promises are not seen. 
here's something else that's not seen. Your thoughts can't be seen. Right. But they're there. And then it says, for the things which are seen are temporary. So what's Paul saying? He's saying everything in what we call the sense world, eyesight, hearing, smell, touching, all these things are real and exist. It's called the sense world. And the sense world is very real, but it's temporary and subject to change. The higher world that you and I live in is the spiritual world of God, where we are in God who we can't see, but we still have God living inside our spirit, which we can't see, but that's the real you. That's the higher reality of your life. That invisible higher reality actually is more real than this lower reality that we can see. And that's the eternal truth. And that's the truth. And see, once you have more faith in the invisible higher reality of what you can't see of where God is, where he lives, his thoughts, his words, his promises, when you put your trust in that invisible realm, which is really a higher reality, then this lower reality of things that we can see in the natural, things we can hear, things we can sense, things that we can touch, those things are all subject to bow and listen to the invisible. Amen. And you were made to live from the higher reality of the invisible to deal with the lower reality that's in the sense world around us. So one thing that we don't want to do with faith and trust and this whole life that we're living here is we don't deny the reality of what's going on. Right. Because it's real. But the higher reality can dictate to that, can speak to that, and bring that into subjection to the higher reality of God's thoughts, God's power, and God's presence. Amen? Yeah. That's the way we have to live. And I, I wrote this down. The most successful people in the world, and I'm really praying about writing a book. Sarah's been bugging me to write it. But I want to actually, I really believe it's the Lord's idea. Okay. Not my idea. I want to, I want to say what, <laughs> what is truly real success? Right. What is real success? That's what we all, you know, there's a lot of definitions of success out there. You're a success if you have this. You're excess if you have that. What is real success? And I believe success is when you know who God is. Secondly, what God made you for. Thirdly, success is you being ready to be led by God and do what he asks you to do. And if you do that, you are successful. It's success is not how much you have materially or financially or all that. That's not success. Those things come and go. What success is that I do what God made me for. Yeah. That I obey the purpose God made me for. And if I did all that, I'll be successful and God will reward me forever. If I listened to God, if I believed in God and I did what he made me for, that yeah. is true success. Not how many followers you have on Instagram. Amen. Not how big the ministry is. Not how many people know you. Did you do what God made you for? And did you listen to him? And were you led by his spirit? That's what success is. Yeah, I just uh, yes. chime in something. So, and especially as seasons change, you want to really check in with the Holy Spirit and say, what am I supposed to be doing in this season for this time right. because in different times in different seasons you may be doing different things so you really want to check in so you can be successful in that season and obedient to god yeah and see what i want to get across today our message today is called don't waste your moment and so we're going to talk to you today about 
don't waste your moment in a minute. That's where we're heading. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but let me share this. The most successful people in the world are those who can perceive what is possible. Yeah. Even when it looks impossible. You see? I do. See, when I know something's possible, even when it looks impossible, and I listen to God and do what he asked me to do in that situation, that is success. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at an impossible situation, maybe you've been hurt. Maybe somebody did something to you they shouldn't have done. Maybe your past was not what it should have been. It got checkered with a lot of things you wish you would have never done. Maybe regrets trying to come up there and pull you down. Try to fill your thoughts with, it didn't work before, I'm not gonna try it again. All these things try to come in to your thought life and stipend you or they try to make you stagnant and all the enemy wants for you is to become stifled and stagnant and not hope or get up and try again yep. see then he feels succeed he feels like that's a success i have stopped them because they let bitterness or hurt or something they did never cause them to want to try again yeah right yep. so so today say regret out of here. Regret out of here. Resentment out of here. Resentment out of here. Never rehearse what people did to you from the past. Keep going forward and that's what will last. Unforgiveness out of, out of here. here. It's got to go because those are the things that try to take this hope that mm -hmm. anything is possible. Remember last week, the anthem of hope is you and I believe, along with God, who's our Father, that all things are possible and nothing is impossible with God. And hope never quits. Right. Hope will never quit. Even if you failed or I failed, get up because hope says you still have a future. You still have a purpose. If it didn't work before, get up. Get yourself rebooted as the big term now is reset. <laughs> it's like, let's take a deep dive. Let's reset. All these are the terms. And the narrative is this. As right? we pivot. Into At the 22. end of the day, we're going to pivot. Okay, throw out all the terms you want. But here's the big term. Success is how you respond to adversity. Yeah. So, That's good. <clears throat> see anybody can try to do something and fail and never do it again if you try or i try to do something and we fail how we respond determines how successful we will be yeah is that good sarah it's really good see pessimists here's what a pessimist is pessimists see difficulties in every opportunity they can have an opportunity be blessed by God, and a day later, forget what he did. Yeah. And then there's the optimist. The optimist, <laughs> they see opportunities in every difficulty. Right here. <laughs> well, I believe God is you an do. optimist. You, yeah. It's like God never promised us we weren't yeah. going to have difficulties. The issue is not the difficulty or the trial or the adversity. It's how do I look at it yeah how do i see it how do i deal with it am i going to be a cynic the rest of my life or am i going to say there's a possibility to get through this god still can turn this for my good yeah it all depends how we see things and the thoughts of god determine how you see with god's eyes see before you see you have to think right because if my thinking is right, I will see right. And all of that compounded together means I will believe right. So that's good, isn't it? Hope is what allows us to persevere through fear, pain, trial, and adversity. Now, last week, we had Len on from a hospital bed, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the reality. The reality was 
he was going through a health situation and we didn't deny that, but he comes on in faith from a bed right here in front of all of us. That's the reality. That's the real thing he was going through in the right. sex world. Right. We don't deny that. But in that difficulty, in that pain, in that adversity, Len has one or two choices. I can let this thing talk to me and take me down and discourage me. And it may temporarily, or I can go back onto what God said, what his promise says, and what his word says, and get hope back and say, wait a second. God still is in control here. I'm going to believe what God said versus what I'm looking at. Yeah. We don't deny what we're looking at, but we take his word and we change our thoughts by saying what God says about my situation. Yeah. That creates hope and it tells your heart and it tells your body, look, dude, you're bowing to me. <laughs> you're going to bow to what God says. Yeah. I'm not coming with you with my problem. I'm coming you with God because me and my problem can't get out of this. <laughs> But God and me are going to take you down yeah. the pike and get you out of the way. Does that make sense? It does. That's what we mean by that. So, <clears throat> so against all odds, sometimes when things look hopeless, look at Abraham. Abraham's way past childbearing. The Bible says his body was dead. Sarah's body was dead. And God says, hey, guess what? You're going to have a child. And they had no hope in the natural to have a child. But mm -hmm. they had to believe what God said versus what they were looking at. Yeah, I was just reading it this morning. And one uh, <clears throat> Sarah, when she um, is thinking in herself, she says, but I'm withered. That's actually how she sees herself. She perceives herself as wow. totally withered. Withered? I mean, that's like... I mean, really how many have ever been withered in your life? <laughs> I mean, that's like really bad. I, I mean, I think now that I think about it, I've been through a lot of withering. <laughs> uh, but the only way we can get out of this withering... <laughs> we have no other... We have no other hope but God. Right. Where's nothing? In, what else can we hope for? <laughs> it's not going to come from trying to figure it out on your own. Yeah, we can take some vitamins. That's good. <laughs> All those things are good. But ultimately, we need the vitamin of God's word, a promise. Right. We need a promise of hope to get us through. Yeah. And God's promises are his vitamins. That's what I call them. They're my daily vitamins. You take them in, they fight against fear, anxiety, stress, health situations. So that's what you want to put your confidence in today. Put your confidence and hope in what God is, what he says, and what he promises. <clears throat> and we have to keep hope alive in our minds. Yeah. In our minds, because our minds can wither. <laughs> See, I can build off of that. Yeah. But that's a good like that. word. I thought you'd like that. Actually. Because the mind will wither under pressure. Right. Wither under externals. Wither under opinions. Yeah. The mind will absolutely only go with what it's being told. Yeah. So we have to dictate to the mind what it's thinking. And that's where hope and confidence comes in. Right. But we don't just like... Oh, I hope it works. No, we are confidence is what God says. So we don't, we're not talking about, I hope this works out. Hope is a confidence assurance, knowing that God is who he is and he will do what he says. And I'm not going to let anything else contrary to that stop me from thinking that, saying that, believing that, and acting like that, even if it doesn't look right. like it in right. the natural. Amen. Amen. So... I want all of us to understand today, I wrote this down, that every one of you, God is giving you a new ability today to get your mind right, to think right, 
to believe right and to act right so that you have hope for 2022, that you don't have just a wish, oh, I hope it's going to be okay. No, not that kind of, I have an assurance and a <laughs> promise from God that it's going to be yeah. an expectantly good year, despite the yeah. odds, despite the forecast. God says, I'm going to turn all things for good. I'm your hope. I'm your anchor. You can trust in me and believe in me. Somebody say hallelujah. I feel hallelujah. The anointing. Yeah. Woo! I thank you, Lord. Even if the thread of hope in you gets thin, frayed, and you look like you're down to your last ounce of strength, I just want you to know today, God is still with you. And as long as God's with you and God is for you, you hold tightly on to God, despite any disappointment, any fear, yeah. any discouragement. I don't care how down you seem or how withered you are. <laughs> Even if you're down to your loss, last hope and thought, you're going to say, God, I'm going to hold on to you more tightly than any disappointment. I'm going to hold on to you more tightly on your word than any discouragement. I'm going to hold on you more tightly than any health issue. I am going to hold on to you more tightly than what I'm looking at, what I'm feeling, what's surrounding me. I'm going to hold on to that thread of hope that you are God and you change not. And you're my father, you're my savior, you're my healer, you're my friend. You will never leave me. You'll never forsake me. And if you're for me, I don't care what's coming against me. I am putting my trust and hope you, in Jesus. you this day in Jesus' name. Jesus. And everybody said amen. Amen. Uh, Sarah knows I'm a very quiet guy in the natural. <laughs> like, I'm very laid back. So when you see this anointing and this fire... That should prove to you there's a God. <laughs> that you can believe there's a God for me it's to be so like that. Because I am totally the opposite of this in my natural personality. Yeah. I mean, I'm humorous and funny type of guy. But I'm very laid back. <laughs> you know, okay, let's see what's on for today. <laughs> and I'll talk to Sarah like this. It's going to be okay. <laughs> uh, so you must know there's a God for him to do that. <laughs> For me to be like that when I'm talking to you. It's true. Because that is it's, totally not who I am. It's not your personality. So 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 only God can change me like that. <laughs> so that's why I know there's a God. <laughs> it's just so funny. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> so that's what keeps hope alive in me. I know that this has to be God for me to be like this. Yeah. That there's truly a God. So anyway, write this down. Hope always gives you an expectation of good, even when it's not visible in the natural. Secondly, write this down. Even when expectations in my life haven't been met, or maybe I've been disappointed, or maybe things didn't work out the way I thought they were going to work. Maybe I, you even believed God, or I believed God, and it didn't turn out the way you thought. Mm -hmm. None of that still changes who God is. Don't let your theology be based on things that didn't work out. God's That's still right. God. God's still the healer. Even if somebody believed and they didn't get healed or whatever, you still keep believing God. Yep. See, our theology is not based on what didn't work or didn't work out. It's based on that God still says he's God. And I'd rather believe God and be sinking down in quicksand and stay believing God and, and eventually end up in the promised land. Mm -hmm. Because you can't lose with God. Mm -hmm. Even people that believe God and they didn't see healing, they still have a better hope because they go on to eternity. Like the scripture says, Paul said, I'm betwixt and between. I'd rather be with God. But even if I die, it'll be better than if I we stay. But for your sake, I want to stay here right. to preach longer. But right. the point he's making is you don't lose no matter what. You just believe no matter what. So never let a disappointment take away who God is and what God says he'll do. Look, there's guys that believe for their marriages that didn't work out. Maybe the person didn't change. There's wills involved. There's all kinds of things we don't always understand. But 
that can't stop us from believing God. Yeah. Right, Sarah? Yeah, one day I was walking down the street and uh, I was really battling a lot of disappointment. I don't know if anyone's ever battled that, but I was yeah. battling incredible disappointment. And I heard the Lord very clearly say, Sarah, my mercy is greater than your disappointment. And I went, whoa. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So I just want to encourage you all today that the Lord's mercy is greater than any disappointment. Yeah. In Jesus' name. And I just release that over you. I release the mercy of God, the loving kindness of God, the compassion of God. And I thank you, God, that uh, just I even see a dis disappointment. Actually, <laughs> this is super funny, but I see disappointment withering right now. I see it just falling oh. over like um, grass that's been scorched by the heat. I just see it being falling over. So I just thank you, God, for mercy for your people, your loving mm -hmm. kindness from everlasting to everlasting in Jesus name. Amen. Yeah. And see what we have to remember here, and we'll get to some really other good points here in a minute is we have to keep hope alive. See, hope has to be kept alive by your thought life and not letting things that didn't work out, disappointments, things you mm -hmm. believe for, maybe, uh, things maybe you've had some things or expectations that got shattered you you believed god you thought you you were going to see something happen and it didn't work out and and so discouragement tries to come in the other big mm -hmm. word other than disappointment is discouragement right and discouragement is what takes away hope for the future and expectation and what we want to make sure is we have to stay in the practice of believing god for hope and expectation for good again, when sometimes it didn't work out before. That's right. And remember we quoted the movie, the great movie that Sarah and I watched every Christmas Eve <laughs> is that in the movie. It's a wonderful life. Okay, I was gonna get there. <laughs> well, you in the movie, see, that's what I mean. I'm a little slower <laughs> Sarah. And my, that's more like the real me. Yeah. <laughs> so in the movie, so Sarah's completing the sentence. <laughs> Because I'm a little slower. <laughs> but in the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, if you remember at the very beginning of the movie, if for you that did see it or didn't see it, let me just give you this real quick. God is talking to the angels up there, the angel up there. And then God hastens Clarence to come, and he's going to send Clarence down to minister to George. Because mm -hmm. George is there. And so Clarence, the angel says, well, what's going on with George? Is he sick? And he said, no, he's not sick. It's worse than that. Yeah. He's discouraged. And you see, that's a real truth. Discouragement. Mm -hmm. Sickness can come and go. But discouragement tries to latch on to you and take your hope away for the future and stop you and paralyze you and stunt your growth of expectation for good. Because many times people have maybe believed for something and their life got altered in a way they didn't think it was going to go yeah situations come up that surprise you that you didn't know were going to happen and that can be a real time of disappointment and discouragement and and then you get disillusioned and you start to get inundated with thoughts of hopelessness and then you start to agree with that and that takes you down a path and takes away expectation and whenever expectation leaves you, write this down. Whenever expectation leaves you, belief yep. starts to wither. And then doubt follows. And then out of doubt comes the ultimate where you're going to quit and never believe again. That's right. And that's what we don't want to happen. That's the path. So now when I talked about this message about don't waste your moment, what we're saying is don't let things that have hindered you try to stop you instead of wasting them on yourself and saying, I'm never going to try again. We're going to say the opposite. That's going to be a launching pad for me. I'm not going to waste that moment. I'm going to use that moment to build my faith. I'm going to use that moment to try again. I'm going to use that moment to believe again, and I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to say what you meant for evil, God. I'm going to turn around and believe 
and I'm going to push through, I'm going to break through, and I'm going to expect that you're going to make it better than it was before. I'm not going to yeah. waste the moment. I'm going to use the moment to say, I'm going to turn this for good. Yep. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. I'm getting fired up about this. All right, let's go to Isaiah 42, 9. I'm going to let Sarah read this. Read this one, Sarah. Isaiah 42, 9. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Amen. So former things, what are the former things, Sarah? That can be past hurts, past regrets. It can even be even good things. God's saying it's good to remember and honor the good things, but you can't even camp there because mm -hmm. it'll stop you from doing a new thing if I want to do right. it. That's right. He doesn't want you to live in the familiar. He wants you to live in the new. Right, right. So the former things are always going to try to steal from your future. Right. So behold, the former things have come to pass. Good or bad can be a detriment to the future. Yeah. Now we want to honor the good and remember the good, but even the good can hinder you from doing some new things that God's got in store for you. Yeah. Have you ever seen those athletes and they like, they've been like major champions and they have all their trophies up and that's really awesome. And they've won all these competitions, Yeah. but then they come to this point in their life and they're like, I don't know what to do. And they can't see past the trophy of yesterday. Yeah. That's exactly what you're trying to say. Exactly. Right. Now I want to use another sports illustration. <laughs> I thought you great, like great. <laughs> Let's let's take let's take a football team. <laughs> and everybody, all the men are just so excited when they're sharing this. <laughs> so so you take a football team. Oh, let's take the Eagles. <laughs> so so in the last couple games, and this is going to really apply. This is really good. <laughs> in the last couple games, the Eagles have fallen behind at the beginning of games, like 10 points, 14 points, whatever. And at that point, it can either be discouraging and you can think about it, wow, we're behind. Yeah. We're really behind here. Yeah. Or they can say, forget that. Yeah. We're going to stick to the game plan. We're going to get right back to what we know to do. We're going to run the ball and they're going to get back on what's good. And so they have to forget that they're behind. Yeah. And once they get that out of their mind and keep going, that's what will bring the breakthrough for them to win mm -hmm. the game. And then secondly, what that That's does, good. see that, see that That's close. That's really good. That is really good. Now, not only do they now win the game, now they have confidence if they fall back again in the next game, yeah. that they're going to have expectation that they're going to still win the game because they're going to see that they still forgot what happened in the past. But here's what they're going to remember. Then they're going to remember the good yep. to overcome the adversity because they didn't let the adversity take away their expectation and their confidence that they're still going to win the game. <laughs> That's awesome, isn't it? It is. Great example. <laughs> and all the men said amen. And even like people that are women, hey, women. will say amen. But amen. So that's what we want to understand when the outcome can seem inevitable. And we get behind. We have to forget the former things. We have to forget that and rise up and not forget who we are. Yeah. Not forget what God gave us. Mm -hmm. Not forget we can still win this game. That's right. But we have to think right and believe right and overcome that adversity. And we've really already won the game. If you remember in one of the games, think about this. I think it was the first Washington game. <laughs> Hertz throws this pass to the tight end. <laughs> Watch this. The ball hits his foot, which is totally unusual. Something that you would never think could happen. <laughs> the ball hits the back of his leg, bounces up in the air, uh -huh. and the other team catches the ball and intercepts it. And now they have the ball, and they're only a few yards away from a touchdown. So that could have been a really discouraging thing for the team. Right. It's something they didn't expect, but they overcame that because they believed. And, <laughs> and he went back to him later and he caught more balls and the rest is history. And, and But I wrote this down because <laughs> we have to have a sense of hope 
that we never are called to be losers. You are not a loser. Say, I am a winner. I'm a winner. My identity is a winner. And here's the difference between a winner and a loser. A loser quits when adversity comes and thinks more about the adversity than the victory that they already have in Christ. And the more right. you have that hope in you, that never quitting attitude, and this is huge, that hope keeps rising because you have a thought, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to let this adversity. I'm not going to let the setback yep. hinder me from getting back up. I have hope because I have a God of hope that I believe. And I have a promise from God that he will turn this around for good. Right. And everybody said, amen. amen. All right, look, let's look at the next verse. Isaiah 43, 19. Isaiah 43. Go ahead, Sarah, you can read this. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. So behold, I will do a new thing. The word new in the Greek means neos, and it can mean something that has never existed before. And then there's another word for new, which means I can take what's been familiar to you and renew it and redo it and make it better than it was before. Yeah. Amen. So when God renews our mind, what does he do? He takes our old thinking, our old mind, and he puts in new thoughts where that old mind thought was and renews that thought and makes it brand new so that we think and see differently than we did before. Right. Amen. Amen. Behold, I'm going to do a new thing in 2022. And right now it's going to spring forth. Mm -hmm. Shall you not know it? Well, how will I know it, Sarah? By the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show. By the word of God, by the truth of God, and banking on what God says is yep. true. And then that new thing is going to pave a path through your thought life. Yep. It's going to make you think new this year, and you're going to see a road in the middle of the wilderness, and you're going to walk on a path right in the middle of adversity that you've never done before. I'm going to do a new thing in you. See, things that used to take you down in 2021 are actually going to be the opposite this year. They're not going to take you down. They're going to be a launching pad to take you through Yeah. in 22. So what used to get you discouraged, you're going to say, oh, no, I've been down that path before. I have a new way of seeing that. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go for it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Psalms 130. Let's go through some scriptures real quick because of our time. I don't want to keep you today. I will wait for the Lord. My soul will wait. And in his word, word I, I hope. Do hope. So when you don't see something happening for you right away. Or something from your past keeps reminding you, don't trust God again. You wait on the Lord. What's that mean? I'm going to wait for the Lord to direct my thoughts. I'm going to think different thoughts. I'm going to choose to think differently. Waiting doesn't mean inactivity. It means directed activity. I'm going to let the Lord direct my mind instead of my mind directing me. I'm going to wait on that before I jump to conclusions and quit, get discouraged and not go forth. Right. Because my hope is in his word and what god says in his word is what i'm going to hope for mm -hmm. amen. amen go ahead you want to say something no 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 at the end I will. oh at the end sarah's got something to share at the end so i just want to say to all of you the next time you're struggling to make a comeback even in your game of adversity you get ready you're going to rise up and god's going to honor you because you're going to believe and do what's right now, let me just give you uh, a couple more quick things here. Write these things down. Your private life, I call this, I want to get into this today, and I'm going to get into it more next week. Your private life is your life where nobody sees you, and your private life is the inside of where you think inside your mind. That's your private life. That's the spirit life. So in your private life, the moments of how you think each day or what is what's going to carry you each day. 
say, see your private moments with God or your private yeah. thoughts, those private moments have significance. Those moments have power. Those moments have value. See, when you start to think and, and think right and talk to your thoughts in those private times, you got to go to your mind. Thank you, Lord, that you're with me. I'm thinking all things for good. Think on these things, things that are good, things that right. are lovely. See, those are those are private moments. You choose how you think. Say, right. say that, Sarah. You choose how you think. And my thoughts. And say, my thoughts. And my moments. And my moments. In private. In private. Have weight. Have weight. Power. Power. Significance. Significance. And momentum. And momentum. And they shape. And they shape. The trajectory of my future. And they shape the trajectory. That is so true. Yeah. They shape the trajectory of your future in those private moments when nobody's around. See, because what you think in private will affect you outside in the public in your everyday life. That's so true. Yeah. So the private preparation inside is what causes the things to change on the outside. So if you remember David, and I got to wrap this up. Boy, this time went so fast today. I, I got through about half of my notes. But we got time. We're going to do it. Put this down. When David was up in the field, privately <laughs> tending the sheep yeah privately every morning praying yep. privately every day seeking god privately in his thought like thanking god remember all the stuff david wrote in the book of psalms it didn't start there it all started in his thought life in his private time that's right then he wrote all this stuff that we read publicly he, he wrote enter his gates with thanksgiving okay. well where did that start it started when David was up in the field where nobody saw him, and he would be thinking thoughts like, Lord, I'm ending your gates with thanksgiving. I praise you. He's thinking that. Then he says that. Yeah. Then God says, I want you to write that. And now today, everybody is reading David's public thoughts that he first had privately. You know, I want to share Isn't something. Isn't that awesome? It's awesome. I want to share something about that. If you read the majority of Psalms, it says, I will enter your house. But at that time, there was no temple. So what house was David entering? He was entering the house of the presence of God. And out of that presence and out of those private moments, he was able to get the blueprint from God for the temple for his son, Solomon. Yeah. And I want to share That's with you. where the private moment comes in. Amen. So your private preparation is what prepares you for all the things you're going to face this year in the future. Right. And we're going to talk more about this next week because we don't have enough time today. But I'm going to talk to you how David, and we're going to use him next week, his private preparation orchestrated his public influence and success. And anything that I can share with you that has helped me is I will never minimize all the private victories God gave me yep. that none of you have never seen. Yep. But I can tell you I've had so many private victories <laughs> that's given me confidence to face my real life out here. Yep. But you're all going to have that. And let's put this down real quick for 2022, and we'll pick this up more next week about not wasting your moment. Because next week I'm going to talk to you about Down Goes Goliath. That's good. Because <laughs> the Goliath is all the things that have tried to take you down. And we're going to smack them right in the face next week. Down goes your Goliath. But first, we're going to talk about this. So we're going to be on David for the next couple of weeks, and it's going to be powerful to take us. Let me give you five quick points, and we'll pick this up next week, about how to move forward to get to your future. Number one, never ever idolize your pain never idolize your past and never magnify the mistakes of your past never do that but always be ready to follow his word speak to your mind and thirdly believe that god's orchestrating your future even right now in the present god is already orchestrating your 2022 then lastly, always know this, 
God is never too far from your reach. He's never, ever leaving you. He will never forsake you. And God will always give you a place to go forward, even when it looks like you can't go forward. I don't care where you've been or what you've done. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Today is the day of new beginnings. Amen. Today is the day your new future begins. The past is over. And lastly, we are going to reach for the new thing today. Because we know God has much in store for you this year. And lastly, as we leave the past behind today and we reach into God's future, I want you to know this word that he has for you. And this is what I want to share for you. It says, behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him or love him. Yeah. On those who hope in his mercy. For this is the year he will deliver your soul, your mind from death and keep you alive in famine. That's the verse I got so far for 2022. That's Psalms 33, 18, 19. And we'll build on all that next week. And we'll talk. Whew, I have so much more here to share. I don't know what to do with all of it. But we have time. Because you know what? We're going to continue this next week. Down goes Goliath. Don't waste your moment. And we're going to talk about this more next week. So I'm excited for all that God has. And the message after that is that I call is the gift for today, the gift of today. So today is the day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I have a future. I have, I have a, a hope. I have hope. New things begin now. New things begin now. And Sarah, you have a word because I'm going to pray over the people. But you have a word first you want to give for, for this year. I actually do have a word for this year. And then we'll pray. So I've been um, seeking the Lord about what his word is for this year. And I got Song of Solomon 2-2. Two, two. Um, but it starts out actually, Song wow. of Solomon, verse one. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Yeah. Then the beloved, that's us. Like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. And so Lord, just Holy Spirit, help this to come out the way you want it to come out. So I've been meditating on this word for weeks and thorns can take on many, many meanings. Um, I, I keep getting offenses. There's going to be persecutions. Um, there are going to be uh, trials. There's going to be things like that. But the, the lily actually didn't exist at that time, but we won't get into that just for sake of purposes. The lily is solely dependent and that's us on one thing the lily is dependent on the sun which is representative of you know jesus christ and being rooted in the ground and the lily is symbolic of purity a lily cannot be sustained unless it's receiving the nutrients of the ground in which it's planted and anything else is not going to sustain it. So I was really charged by the Holy Spirit that this year, the Lord is really coming in and purifying things. Self-sufficiency out the window, humility and dependence in, purity in, that's private and public. Right. And <laughs> really private and public. And, and props that may have worked for yesterday, they're not going to work today. They're not going to work anymore. But there's a protection in the middle of all those thorns. It's his love. And, and, and the a fascinating thing about the lily, if you look at a flower, and it says this in Psalm 5, it says, look up. Have you ever noticed flowers can't have their heads going like this? They're looking up towards the nutrients. The Lord wants all of us to be looking up at the sun. Look up this year. Do not look around. 
at the thorns, they're not going to sustain you. And, and I strongly, strongly encourage all of you, wherever you are in your walk with the Lord, get rooted in the word of God. Get rooted in a really strong um, time with the Lord. Yesterday's, there, there was an incredible grace on, on yesterday, and that was awesome. And there was a grace on today, but it's a different kind of grace. And, and I just want to say this because I, I don't know the time. Even Jesus doesn't know the times <laughs> when he's going to return. But it is very clear the Lord is preparing us. So do not waste this moment. Do not waste this moment. Because if the lily is not looking up, there is no growth. Yeah. Then you get into withering. And the first thing that I saw when I was pressing into this, before I even get into, got into Song of Solomon 2, um, I, I saw the word unite and I saw growth over it. So I prayed into it and I prayed into it. And, and I know that there are a lot of prophets out there and I'm, I'm all for this. This is the year of the breakthrough. This is the year of the, you know, this, that, that will happen. But it's going to happen if you're rooted in the word rooted in hope in Jesus and you're looking up and you're not looking around at all the thorns because they're not going to harm you they're not going to harm you have you noticed in this scripture that lily isn't getting poked and prodded that lily is sustained by the sun so 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 stay planted in his love stay planted in his love. And I also just sensed as I was praying, right, as, as I was praying before I share this, that the Lord is going to pour out such encounters of his love that a lot of you are just going to fall down weeping on your knees if you allow it. If you allow it, don't move past that moment. Don't move past that moment. Don't move past the moment. You're going to fall on your knees. You're going to be taken into encounters where you, and you need these. We need these for the next season coming up. We need these. We need this for this season. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. This is very serious. And I say this with love. It's not like a doom and gloom word. It's out of the, out of the love of the Lord. And, and, the, and I said to the Lord, you know, with these props and all this stuff, how do I present this to the people? Cause it sounds so harsh and it sounds so, and he said, actually it's in my loving kindness. And I said, well, how's that Lord? And he said, I'm pulling out the props because in eternity, man made things don't make it through the fire. And I want my people to be rewarded. So let them go, let them go. It's in the Bible. So I just want to bless you all. I just thank you, God, for this word. I thank you, God, for bringing us further revelation on this word. Lord, keep us pure. Keep us looking up. Lord, that your eyes are looking to and fro to find a heart that's truly yours. Find it with us. Find it with you, Mike. Take away anything that needs to be taken away. Any man-made stuff, any self-sufficiency, any trust in our own strength and in our own flesh, we just say, go, go, take it, Lord. And we say, thank you, thank you for taking us to the place of complete dependence, complete humility, and complete trust in you. We thank you that in your loving kindness that you're preparing us for eternity because you want us to rule and reign there. So we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, and we thank you for the grace in this season to walk hand in hand with you. Lord, I thank you for fresh hunger for the word of God, fresh hunger for things of the spirit, and for the fire of God to burn up anything else so that all that remains is your love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your love. And thank you, Lord, that thing we said in the message was too, that the first thing we need to really realize 
is how much you love us. And we just thank you, Lord, that you, your word says that you set your affection on us and that we can set our affection on you. And even David, when he prayed, he said, I set my affection on you, Lord, and on your house. Yes, Lord. So we just pray for everyone today that they set their affection on you, Lord. Let them love you the way you love them. And we just praise you and thank you, Lord, no matter what is going on around us. Your word says, look up for your redemption is nigh. So we thank you for your love and thank you for your love for us. And we thank you, Lord, more than ever this year, we do want to recommit our lives to love your word, to put a love for your word. Your word says in Psalms 119, that to love your word and the thoughts of your word, the principles of your word. So I pray too this year that we would just read Psalm 119 afresh and anew. And as we read it, just let it resonate deep within us as we read Psalm 119 for this year. Because that's one of the words you gave me for this year is Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, a light and a lamp. So we praise you today that as we look to you, as we look to your word this year, that we are going to walk in these promises and walk in the light as you are in the light, and we will have fellowship one with each other. And let us more than ever before value the connection with you and with each other, and that we will be, we will be faithful to you, to your word, and to each other as a community at Unite. So we bless every person today. We yes, thank Lord. you for their faithfulness. And most of all, we thank you for your faithfulness to all of us, Lord, in this day, in this hour that we are in, that we will champion you, Lord, champion your love and take up your cause and glorify your name. And everybody said, amen. amen. So thank you all. We appreciate you all. We, we love you. We thank you for this day. And we thank you for your love, for your support, for the giving. Thank you for your tithe, your offering that you've been we giving. We love you all. To support the ministry. Most of all, it carries out the Lord's work and his ministry yes. and his vision. And that's God's method and God's way. So we live by faith. We trust the Lord. And as you've given your tithe and offering this year, we have been able to grow. We've seen incredible growth and fruit lives being changed all around the world yeah and all the needs of the ministry being met we are thankful that god has blessed us and will continue to bless us as you give and as we give yeah. so we thank god for you so if you are, are new to giving and you're learning how to give just stay with it and at the beginning of the year it's always good to give out your first and your best to god because the Bible talks about the first fruits, give your first and your best. So pray this week or today what you're to give. Give your first and your best to God to start out the new year the right way. So you can just go to the website, which you're putting up on the screen now. Kiana's putting up. Go to give there. Just hit the give button, give online. Or if you want to do the text to give through your phone, whatever way you want to do it, or if you want to send it. But the easiest way is just to go online to do it. We just want to say, thank you, Lord. Bless the first fruit of yes, this Lord. year. And let it be like in Romans, it says the first lump makes the whole rest of the body successful and complete. So we give this first fruit to you, Lord, and we bless it this year. And thank you for everyone as they give their best today. Bless them and meet all their needs for the rest of this year and beyond. Mm -hmm according to your word in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And um, it does just to confirm and give you scripture for that talks about it in Leviticus 23. Um, it talks about it in uh, Nehemiah um, 10 verses 35. And we made ordinance when they came back into the uh, after the wall was rebuilt and we made ordinances to bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruit of all the fruit of the trees year by year to the house of the Lord. And remember, Abel, remember Abel, he gave, he gave the first and the best. So I just want to encourage you. I've done, I've done this 
for years now. And the Lord has blown me away and not just financially, every area, it carries over into every area because where your treasure is, your heart is also. So I just want to share that with you and also just want to um, let you know, last week, we really wanted to um, sow into um, really actually prayed and since the Lord wanted to sow it to children in the next generation as we were crossing over. Um, so we um, actually gave three offerings, maybe four offerings. Yeah, I think it was four. Four. Maybe. We gave into um, uh, Fusion Global, which is uh, Rabbi Jason, and he brings out um, the old and the new to bring out Yeshua throughout the entire scripture. We also really felt strongly to bring out to, I'm sorry, we really felt strongly to sow into St. Jude's to care for um, children with incurable diseases and to um, cover their medical bills as the Father has covered us in so many ways. And he's been our provider in so many ways. And, to, and, and it helps the families with transportation. It helps the families with... Um, you know, just even having a place to stay as their children are being treated. Um, so we really feel strongly and we feel a strong connection with St. Jude's and we sowed um, a double offering into Unlikely Heroes to bring children out of sex trafficking. And um, because of the time frame, um, the offering was doubled. So it was double, double. So <laughs> that was really awesome. And um, we will be preparing a list. We're getting it from our accountant to go against to you know, make sure everything's uh, against my personal list, make sure I didn't miss anything, just, you know, checks and balances. Um, but, uh, and to share with you, I think next week of all the, all the ministries, all the different places yeah. where we've sewn. Yeah, we, we want to share with you all the ministries last year that we sewed to, that you sewed to with us through your yes. giving and through our giving. So we have a, a number of so many ministries, we'd have to list them all out. But we thought we should share and give you a, a recap so that you know yeah. how the kingdom is being ministered to through your seed, through our seed, going in to help many lives around the world. So we want to say thank you, thank, thank you, thank, thank you, you for your faithfulness and your sowing, your tithing, your offerings. They're all being planted in good soil. And the Lord has just done a, amazing, amazing things this past year with the seed. So thank you so much. Yeah. So pray about today. Give that first fruit offering unto God and, and just see what all God's going to do will be amazing. So we I thank promise you, you I'm a, I'm a living yeah. testimony to trying this, yeah, trying so, it out. And we, again, we don't do that ever out of pressure giving. No, it's got to be out God. of joy and willingness. You know, our trust is in the Lord, not people, but God uses people to get our biggest joy is for you to get the blessing. Yes. That's the biggest yes. thing. We want you, like Paul said, it's for your benefit it is. to bless your home, your family, and your future. So with that, happy new year, everybody. Happy new year. Have a great week. Sweet. Thank you so much for coming on today, all of you from all over the world. We thank God for you. Go Eagles. Go. We love you, Len. Go Steelers. We and love we, you, Abrahams. We pray that something good's going to happen. To all of you this week in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you, Sarah. I love you, Dan. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We love you all too. <laughs> See you next week. See you next week. Bring a friend. Bring a friend next week. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. All right. Have a great week. Love you guys.